In the primary, it is a sliver of the issues that we disagree with that get all the attention. Well, that was Governor Brad Little tonight, just minutes after CBS News and the AP called the gubernatorial race in the Republican primary in his favor. Good evening and thank you for joining us for a special edition of Creme 2 News at 11 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. And I'm Whitney Ward. Thank you for being here. Tonight we have team coverage of the Idaho primary election. Our Amanda Rowley is at the Kootenai County Elections Office where ballots are still being counted tonight. And Kyle Simchuk's been following the governor's race tonight, which has attracted the most attention in tonight's primary. We want to start off though with the big news tonight. As we just said, the AP and CBS News have both already called the governor's race for incumbent Brad Little. Statewide, he is clearly in the lead, as you can see right now, with 58% of the vote. The closest challenger is the current lieutenant governor in Janice McGee, and she now sits with 27% of the vote. Here is our Kyle Simchuk with the very latest tonight. Throughout the evening, we watched incumbent Governor Brad Little gain a substantial lead over Janice McGeehan, the Idaho lieutenant governor endorsed by former President Trump and the Kootenai County GOP. Little is also leading McGeehan in Kootenai County. As we've mentioned, the Associated Press and CBS News has called the race declaring him the winner of the Republican primary. Little spoke at a watch party shortly after the initial results came in. Take a listen. I want to thank all the Republican candidates who ran in this primary. All of you collectively, your hard work and the passion for keeping Idaho red. I'm, I'm truly humbled by the Idaho Republican Party and how they've entrusted me to continue to be your governor. Just like nearly every day in the last three and a half years, I felt the honor of serving the great state of Idaho in good times and in tough times. Little and McGeehan have become bitter political rivals over the last two years. At a watch party tonight, Idaho GOP Chairman Tom Luna told the crowd their real opponents are the Democrats and Joe Biden, not fellow Republicans. We agree on 80 percent. We passionately debate with the, that 20 percent we don't agree during the primary. Then the voters have their say and they let us know which direction they want the party to go. And that's the direction we will do. We'll unite around these candidates. So Governor Brad Little will move on to the November general election where he'll likely keep his job as governor. The last time Idahoans elected a Democrat for governor, that was in 1995. Kyle Simchuk, Krem 2 News. So we are now moving on to the Democratic candidates for the gubernatorial primary in Idaho. Idaho has not elected a Democrat governor in 27 years. Currently, there is only one Democratic candidate on the ballot. His name is Stephen Height. Shelby Rongstad, the mayor of Sandpoint, is running as a write-in candidate. As of right now, writing candidates are sitting at about 22% of the vote, height with 78% of the vote. And there are also two libertarian candidates who are running for the position of governor, Paul Sand and John Dion Jr. You can see Paul Sand clearly in the lead there with 63% of the vote. So now let's transition to look at the lieutenant governor's race. Since Janice McGeehan is running for governor, there will not be an incumbent in this race. Let's start by taking a look at the Republican candidates. There are only three running, including Scott Bedke, Daniel Gasiorowski, and Priscilla Giddings. Looking at the results so far, Bedke up 57% of the vote. The next closest competitor, Giddings, with 38% of the vote. And there is only one candidate running as a Democrat for the position of Lieutenant Governor. Terry Pickens Manweiler is running uncontested, so as you can see, having 100% of those votes. Moving on to the race for U.S. Senate, there are five Republican candidates running, including Mike Crapo, who is the incumbent and has served in the U.S. Senate since 1999. The AP has already called this race rather for Crapo. The latest returns have Crapo with nearly 70% of the vote tonight. And in the Democratic Party, only two candidates are running for that position. David Roth and Ben Pusley are running for U.S. Senate. David Roth right now in the lead with 57% of the vote. Well, the polls in Idaho closed a few hours ago, but really the counting is just beginning for elections workers. They have a long night and, I guess, days ahead of them. Mm -hmm. So, Creme 2's Amanda Rowley is at the Kootenai County Elections Headquarters tonight. That's right, we're here at the Kootenai County Elections Office. Behind me is the last car that we're seeing here for the evening, bringing in ballots from precincts 
all across Kootenai County. You know, elections staff, they expect to be here through the night counting ballots from every precinct in Kootenai County. I do want to mention, though, the elections clerk takes the security of your ballot very seriously, and his office has taken steps to protect your vote. For example, two people must be with the ballots at all times. So when the polls closed at 8, two people, which include Kootenai County Sheriff's deputies, pick up the ballots and deliver them right here to the elections office. Now you can watch staff count and watch that whole ballot counting process live streamed from the Kootenai County Elections Office. You can find the link on the county elections website. That's a step that the county elections office has taken to ensure the transparency and build trust in the voting system. Again, staff are expected to be here late tonight counting all those ballots and they'll be posting updates on those results online as well. Reporting from the Kootenai County Elections Office, Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News.